These are the extremes of the coaching job right now in the competition. Adam Kingsley has his Giants humming. They're on a five-game winning streak and finals are within reach. Brett Ratton is the caretaker coach at North Melbourne and they're, they're pretty glum times. It's, it's brutal going, having lost 15 in a row at the Kangas. Adam's at home in Sydney. Great to have you with us, Adam. Thanks, Jared. Thanks for having me, Robert. And Brett Ratton, always appreciate you coming to the desk. Good to be here. T t tough times, I'm sure. You've got to find the levity somewhere. So we were watching you have a kick of the footy yesterday and you've still got it. You've still got it. You're able to find the, find the big sticks. Yeah, and there's not many in, in me, but um, I, was, I was lucky enough to put this one through. But, um, yeah, it was a very disappointing day yesterday, I think. You know, the vision... Um, I challenged Steve-O to a shot and got it, but... Yeah, pretty challenging times yesterday uh, as a football club to play and, and dish up what we did. Um, and we didn't see it coming, um, but that first quarter really let us down. And to be frank, we could have been maybe, you know, eight goals down at quarter time. What brings that sort of insipid... And I know it's a strong word, that, Rats, but, but it was. It was. It was really hard to watch. I can't imagine what it would like to try and coach through that period. Is there a mixture of... Demanding an anger, or is it still? Are we still got our arm around them and saying, "Come on, boys, we'll, we'll help you through it." What, 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 where are you uh, swaying to now? No, well, at, at quarter time there was more. You know, let's pull our finger out, and in the uh, half time address was more. Well, we're lucky enough to be in the game, and you know, it all started around the contest when you're minus twelve and eight at clearances, and you know, the tackle percentage is at forty two percent. Well, the opposition have got the ball, and you can't get it off them. But they're the numbers. How does it get like... How, you've been involved in football for 40 years. Yeah. How, does it get, how does it get to become like that? Has, has the morale fallen out of the playing group? I don't think so. I think when you go Monday to Friday, you, the place has been... You know, it could be more upbeat because you're winning games, but for a team that hasn't won games of football for a while, the morale of the place is, is pretty balanced. I think there's an element of standards and accountability there's a teaching element and then there's also the support element for the players. So I haven't seen the, the place and people not wanting to come in. That hasn't been like that at all. But that result yesterday, we didn't have training today. We'll turn up tomorrow. I think there'll be a few more challenges. So how, how do you nurture any level of hope in a scenario like this? Well, there's been some... We've sort of been snakes and ladders for the last, you know, eight weeks or so where we've played some really good footy and we take two steps forward and we take a step back. And we took two steps back yesterday. So, you know, the performances of some of the younger individuals, Sheasel's performed well, Bailey Scott's having a very good year. We can see, you know, Goda gets back, but we're seeing it from an individual point of view, but not collective. And hopefully we can get some, you know, gel with the group and we get some opportunities with six weeks to go. We're not giving up hope in how we go about it, but we can't live with those performances. Describe very challenging tomorrow morning. Um, well, there'll be some honest conversations, but I think the morale and everyone will feel pretty low. And that's the challenge of a coach and footy club is to, to lift that morale. Um, you know, whether it's a Monday or the Tuesday, we perform like that. We have to deal with the consequences when you do. And they are the standards that we don't accept. When you make decisions at selection, is that for is that for the now? Are you looking for the future? Are you coaching? I know you've probably been asked this before, but are you coaching on behalf of Alistair Clarkson and what he might be looking forward, getting games into players now for next year, some of the senior players not getting games? What, what are you coaching for at the moment, the now or the future? Oh, there's a balance there, Robbo. We can't just put all the kids in and, you know, expect them to lift to the standards um, of being competitive each week. We need a sprinkle of that. And, you know, we talk through with the selection and who we should put in, and that's a, that's a common uh, conversation. But, yeah, we need to get the balance right. We can't just throw them all in there. Adam, you're living a period of surging belief, and I feel like we, we've seen it five times this year as you've come from behind and sometimes substantial deficits in the last quarter. What is it? How do you diagnose what you've nurtured? Um, yeah, it's hard to put the finger on the one thing. I think it's it's probably a few different things. We had a really strong pre-season, uh, trained a little bit differently um, to what these guys have done in the past. So I think that the guys are reaping the rewards of that. Um, and then I, I guess our guys are really attacking the contest and 
and trying to build their identity around uh, pressure and, and and playing that style of game, really contested um, style of game. Um, and then and then you know obviously we have some reasonable players who are, who are able to finish the work. You know Toby Green, some of his goals on the weekend particularly were just outstanding, and and Sam Taylor at the other end. Um, you know, just stops goals. And, uh, you know, it's always handy having really good players. So is there a contagion when Toby Green kicks the first goal of the last quarter and this is a collective that has lived this a few times? Can you see that? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the more times you're in that situation, probably depending upon how the res those results have gone, and they've gone pretty favourably for us a lot of the times. Um, and even the ones that we haven't got over the line, we've sort of been in the game pretty deep too. So... You know, we've got a lot of belief that at three-quarter time, whatever the margin is, you know, we can pick it back. And, uh, you know, we saw, uh, what were we, 17, 17 points down at three-quarter time. And, you know, five goals to none in the last quarter, you know, just continues to build that belief. You've got some gun players, we all know that. But you've got a lot of resolve, Adam. You look at the, the Giants' play from, our, from my point of view, you, you see an honest footy team. And I was just asking Brett yep. about pressure and, and standards and... How does that happen? You've got a, a slightly, you've got a more experienced group. Can you? Is it easier to add those levels yeah. of pressure when you've got experience as it compares to Rats, who's got a half a list of young fellas who play in their second and, and third years? What's yeah. the, how much of a difference yeah. can that make? Well, I think it does, so long as those players are leading the way and. Uh, you know, I reckon Stephen Cornelio has been a real driver and, and barometer in that space for us across the course of the season. And, and our list profile is slightly different in that in that we have probably those upper echelon players, four or five of them, and then we surround them with a lot of youth. So I think probably across the course of the season, we've been reasonably inexperienced in terms of games played. But th those leaders, those those guys who have done it for a long period of time, really, really lead the way. They drive the standards. Um, there is a there is a certain level of expectation from those guys, and um, you know the, the guys who follow them are certainly willing to to try their hardest to to pressure and be good in the contest, so on and so forth, execute their roles. Um, you know, and so far it's been working quite well for us. So when you listen to Adam Kingsley speak, then and you've been a part of these teams before, you think, God, look at their senior group leading the way. I'm not asking you to sit here and be critical of your senior players because they're busting their bum for you. Yeah. But they've got a consistent, high-level achieving senior group, which is dragging the young fellas along. Oh, they have. We played them a few weeks ago down in Tassie and, that, you know, their, their ability to, you know, run from contest to contest and, and win the footy. And it was led by their leaders. Um, Green was outstanding that day and really turned the game really quickly. But, you know, for us, you know, we, we need Jai Sim complain you know, our co-captains, and he wasn't there on the weekend. So it leaves a little bit of a void for the next one to stand up. How quickly can it go from where you are to where you want to get to? Yeah, things can change quickly. I think, you know, with the talent that we... You know, Braden George is a very talented player and hasn't even played this year with an ACL. So if we can just keep adding to the Wardlaws and the Sheasels and the, the Georges, um, yeah, we could, we could turn around quickly. Adam, your form since round 11 is second only to Collingwood and you've got the, the five-game winning streak going. You're outside the eight on percentage. Is the lure of finals now a, a decent incentive? Um, well, of course it is, yeah. I mean, we, we're aspiring to play finals, as we've said, and, um, you know, the guys, I don't know whether they look at the ladder, to be honest, but if they did, they'd see that, well, we're, we're equal sixth, seventh, eighth, whatever we are, and in the next... Well, the remaining six games, we play five of the teams who are who are certainly in that bulk of the ladder that are competing for those final eight spots. So, the reality is, if we're good enough, th then we'll get there. But um, but again, you know, we've got to be good enough, and we've got to perform at a high level each and every week against particularly the teams competing for those those final spots in the eight. I don't want to continue going on on the, on this croaking horse, which is North Melbourne at the moment. Yep. Sonia Hood put out a tweet today, the, the, the chairman and Jared will read it up as soon as it gets on, gets on the screen. I, I, I feel, Rats, th this team's been down the bottom for five years and I, I feel, and there, there it is there, I feel that everyone's, everyone's had enough. When is this club going to get out of the bottom bracket? Five years is far too long, mate. It's 
not your fault, it's not his fault or her fault, but it's someone's fault. Yep. And this club, when it, when's it going to change? When's the wheel going to turn, mate? And Sonia kept saying, stick together. Everyone will stick together at North Melbourne because that's what North Melbourne people do. Well, but it's sure, got to sure get some that. nourishment, mate. Yeah, you're spot on with the nourishment. But the, the bit that we spoke about to the players especially is, you know, post-game when I coached from the boundary line in the last quarter. So we go down. Just to see if we could change something. Yeah. Uh, didn't have much of a response. But the bit of post-game was really around we can, you know, we can fracture as a group after this performance and go our own ways and think, you know, six weeks to go, or we can galvanise and come together. And what I've seen is, with teams, is if you fracture, you've got no chance. But if you stay together, you are a chance. And we just need to add some more players with next year's draft and get a healthy list week in, week out. And that's been, you know, some of the things that we've seen this year. But we cannot fracture as a group. And I think Sonia's statement is perfect for what we need. Are you... Are you on list management as the, the caretaker coach? I've been there t twice. Does that mean you're going to have a more of a role, a less of a role, or when Clarko comes back, you'll take a step back? Probably. Yeah. I'm not sure there, so we need to work through that. What would you like to do? What would you like to do in the future at this footy club? I'm not sure, Robbo. I'm working through things and... Uh, yeah. So you're a bit more invested than you were working two, three times a week. <laughs> well, it was, it was well actually, and truly. It, it was 40 to 45 hours, Robbo, so that was a part-time job. Was it really? Yeah, and so, the full-time yeah. job's what, 80? <laughs> yeah, that's right, exactly. So you want to be involved? I want to be involved in the game. I'll, uh, you know, the, the bit to be very fortunate to go to North Melbourne and, and be a part of this footy club in a, in a time that we're building. Um, our performances haven't been where we want, but I can see the excitement, and especially with the kids. And... Uh, what I have found is the organisation and how at the footy club, Monday to Friday, everybody is together. And that's the first step of getting success. Priority pick, yes or no? Do you reckon you deserve one? Well, the club has spoken to the AFL. Yeah, I know that. Um, what do you think? Well, other teams have had it. So that's a yes? I'll leave it to your discretion. Well, five years on the bottom of the ladder, you need a priority pick. We can't have teams... This just happens to be your team at the moment. We that's just can't have teams like this in our game. Yep. Do you agree with that? I've never been a priority pick I, I. in any circumstances. Well, so this is bad circumstance. It is bad circumstance. What's the timeline with Alastair Clarkson? Do you expect to see him in some capacity tomorrow, for instance? Yeah, he will... Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see Al tomorrow at some stage. And then I think uh, the plan is, you know, we'll just work it from there. So I, I'm not privy to exactly when he's going to come back, but these are stepping stones each time we catch up and talk and where does it look like next week or in a few days' time. So, um, but, yeah, he's had a catch-up with the coaches the other night. We all sat around, talked footy, he had some ideas, we implemented some of the things. So, yeah, he's still part of the group. Are you? Is it worthwhile if he comes back and coaches games in the back portion of the season? I think he will. I think he'll be coaching North Melbourne by the end of the year. Yep. And do you feel like you'll be shotgun with him? What Have you got a uh, picture of what it would look like? Yep. I take one out, one back and go uh, back into the back seat. Make him sure. your board man. Make him your board man, make him put the, the magnets. Might be less stress, <laughs> Robert. Might be less stress. <laughs> I don't want to no, stuff that one up, though. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Um, just give us a quick picture of the injury. So, Zerhar's syndesmosis? Yeah, we'll just wait and see. That'll be significant time. Um, Wardlaw with the hamstring, he'll miss multiple weeks. We're not sure exactly there. Um, the good news is, coupled with, you know, uh, Jack Archer, um, he's OK with that hamstring. Had a test and Liam Shields fine. Coleman Jones will miss a, a week or two here with his second concussion in um, probably 10 weeks. The moment brought to you by Points Bet. This was the coaching moment of the weekend. John Longmire was in milestone game 300. When he started out, Rats was coaching the Blues and Adam was an assistant coach at the Saints. So the longevity in the Harbour City, as well as the success, the success that's been accumulated, has really been something. And that's what Kingy said. He buries his emotions pretty deep, probably. But that was great oh, to see. It, it, it was absolutely awesome to see a group of players love their coach like they did Rats. And, and King is, and he deserves it. He's been such a, a great football person for, for the Sydney area. Look at that.
He sort of got carried away and he sort of realised I'm getting too carried away, so he stuck his chest back out and stopped smiling. <laughs> there at the end, but there's no doubt he enjoyed that. He would have enjoyed it so much when he got in the room, sang the song. Oh, special moment, um, you know, to put sort of goosebumps up your... It does, doesn't it? It does, because mm. that, the relationship between the player and the players and him, and you can just see how special it is, and that's what he's built through, you know, 15 so mm. years of coaching, and um, credit to him. It's uh, fantastic. What do you make of your cross-town coach, Adam? Oh, well, that vision you just showed tells you all you, all you need to, to know. Um, his players absolutely love him, and we're quite fortunate the Giants. We've got Jeremy Laidler, who spent a long time either playing or coaching under John, uh, come across and coach our forwards. So when I ask Lades about it, he always talks about his great passion and his care for his players is second to none. And, uh, you know, as I said, it's evident in that uh, in that clip you just showed. Lovely. Hey, tell us about Josh Fay. How unlikely was it that he played? And what did he have to go and do the next day? Yeah, uh, so Josh, uh, what he was up, he's played three games um, before the weekend. Two of them as sub. And then, um, you know, with, with a late withdrawal with Finn Callahan going out with a bit of soreness and losing Tom Green earlier on, we, uh, we asked him to come into the, t into the side and play as a sub again. He came on and had tremendous impact. He had seven touches. I think he only played 15 minutes, kicked a really pivotal goal for us. But given that he only played the 15 minutes, we then asked him to, um, to get up early at 4.30 in the morning, jump on a plane to Melbourne and go down to Frankston and play against Frankston um, in our VFL team and played a full game down there and did particularly well for us. So really selfless, um, you know, action, but he understands the importance of playing this time of year and getting games in and, and maintaining fitness. So he did a great job. And did, they, did he have a thrilling win there as well? Is that right? Yeah, it was. It was a one-point win down at Frankston and, uh, yeah, the boys were, were certainly pumped with that. What a great weekend. And another coach get, get bumped on the weekend. Do you reflect on yourself or you just think of Dewey or did it, you got too much on your plate that sort of passed you by? Oh, you think of the person um, and how it's, you know, you think of them dealing with it and their family and that, but at the end of the day, you sort of, you move on and we're worried about the Hawks and how we go about it. But you always think about a coach that's, you know, leaving the game um, and the way that's been done and things like that. So, yeah, oh, you feel for him. We're not getting it right, are we? Not we. Football clubs aren't getting it right, are they? No, they're not getting it right. What can they... What... what, what, what sim simply... What can they do better? Is it, is it about communication? Is it about being up front and... Well, everything's um, about communication. Yeah. And being transparent. And like any coach, I think, you know, Adam would be in the same boat. You... If you know where the situation sits and you're coaching for your life, that's fine. But just tell, tell the coach the story. Tell him what's in front of him and at least he can do something about it. And if, if they said to somebody, you've got three games to win and you don't win them, well, at least you know the landscape, yep. not this uh, hide behind, yeah, he's going well or this and that. Just say it as it is. I think the coaches, uh, the players ask for it. We ask for it. <laughs> the players want honesty from the coach, but then... The clubs can't give honesty to the coach. Just give it to them straight between the eyes. They need it. They, it, they know what they have to deal with. And you do your best. And if your best isn't good enough, well, time to move on. At least you knew what was in front of you. So you're about to play the, the Suns, Adam. Do you... So they were a bit different from, from one week to the next under the, the caretaker coach. How, how, do you, how do you think through that? <laughs> Yeah, well, it'll be a challenge this week, no doubt. I haven't uh, watched their last weekend's game yet. Uh, I'll do that a bit later um, tonight and uh, just try and assess that against previous games they've played, see how um, how they're playing, if they've changed anything with, with their structure or their system. I mean, typically in the early parts of a, of a coaching change, you're probably more shifting the magnets as opposed to, to having significant changes around style of play. But... Um, a bit of the commentary that I have seen it suggests that they played a little bit um, quicker and uh, certainly were ferocious in their pressure and their contest. So that will be something that we'll, we'll no doubt have to prepare for. So St Kilda playing St Kilda or coaching against St Kilda? Have we got Saints this week? Someone told me. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Is, that, is it human to think, well, yeah, right, eh? no worries. You, you got rid of me and I'll, I'll try and show her or... Or is it human and mature to say, I've been there, that's part of my life, I'm now coaching the Kangaroos and 
Probably the second, yeah. the second one. Um, yeah. You know, that's that's part of the game. Um, very fortunate to be there for a few years, but um, yeah, we've got them this week, and we need to perform at a, a greater standard than what we did last week. So that's our challenge. Will someone at the North Melbourne <coughs> Footy Club, other than you, speak to the players, the Kangaroos players, about what it means to be playing St Kilda this week? Like, what motivations are you guys searching for? You're looking every week, and it's yeah. not working at the moment. So maybe you go the other way and you get Todd Viney or Alistair Clarkson come in and talk to the players about what it means for North Melbourne for Brett Ratton to be coaching against St Kilda this week. Well, we've got... Did that happen? <coughs> I'm not sure, but we've got tomorrow... Me and Jared will come down and <laughs> okay, no tell them. Yeah, this is a big game of football for your coach. Well, we've got our coaches meeting tomorrow and we sort of plan the whole week out in sort of what we want to educate and the gaps that we had in our games and some of the things that worked well. But uh, we go through on the motivation side of it too. So we'll, we'll have a chat about that. Just a quick one to finish. So your chief executives are going to hear tomorrow the thought bubble from the AFL around a wild card set up to the finals, a play-in weekend. So potentially 7 v 10, 8 v 9 to participate in finals the week after. Adam, just off the top of your head, what do you think? Yeah, uh, I actually like the idea of it. I, I haven't. Uh, it's interested me rather than making a, a call yes or no. Uh, I, I know it works quite well in the NBA, but um, but I'd be interested to have a look at it. And yeah, I think I think it's a possibility that it, it could be really, really valuable um, addition to to our final system. Yeah, I'm against it. I think if you finish seventh, you might be three games ahead of the eighth team and, you, and next minute you're fighting for your life. Uh, I think that's quite unfair. You know, the, the bit about our game is it's a marathon and you've got a list and you have to keep building each week and winning games of footy. And if you deserve after round, the last round of the home and away, you deserve to be there. And that would be my vote. Hey, it's John Ralph's story. You'll see more on it on couch. Adam, Brett, great to have you with us. Thanks a lot.